Hey, New Promise family. My name is Peter, or as my wife calls me, Alan. And my name is Paula. And, and we have a special guest tonight, Little Miss Olivia, who uh, refuses to go down. So we're going to try it like this. Hopefully, so no crying. But yeah. No promises. We'll see. <laughs> Happy Mother's Day. I am so honored to spend my first official Mother's Day uh, with my husband and our daughter, Olivia, as we mentioned. We were asked by our pastor, Rhonda, to share a little bit of our story and journey, as so many of you have prayed and um, endlessly supported us over the years. We hope that our testimony will encourage you all that are waiting for your promises to come to pass. Thinking back to the beginning of our journey, it started um, seven years ago. We have been married for nine years, and prior to getting married, we completed a premarital class with our pastors, Rhonda and Kurt. Now, part of that class was a questionnaire on compatibility, and one of the questions was, how many kids do you we guys... We pass with flying colors, by the way. Make it compatible. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> How many kids do you want to have? Uh, our answers did not match, even though we have talked about this. Our answers did match. Quite a few times before. Um, we answered it the same way, but slightly different. I said I wanted two to three based on um, being one of um, three siblings. And he said... And I said three to four. It's the same thing. We both want three kids, basically. Because you said every sibling needs a friend. <laughs> yeah, if we have four. I mean, if you've ever been to an amusement park with three people, an odd number, it's not fun. Right? So that was my Right. Opinion. So, well, never in a million years <laughs> um, did either of us think that our journey would look so different or would turn out this way. And um, how different the answer to that question would be almost 11 years later. Um, it is very hard for me to open up and share such hidden parts of my heart. But I'm praying this will encourage people to trust God while in an impossible situation and seek joy in the journey because he will bring it to pass in his uh, perfect timing. Shortly after getting married, uh, we lost two babies and my doctor suggested that we do some testing and some biopsies um, in hopes for some answers. The answers did come and um, I was basically told I might never be able to get pregnant in the natural. Let's keep going. Um, or if I do get pregnant, I might not be able to carry to term. Um, Sorry, repeat that. I mean, she she spit up right there, but that was that was a big moment for us right there. Um, she told us that we might never be able to have kids. Right. Um, um, I remember calling Galen while in the parking lot at the doctor's office and crying and apologizing for being broken. Um, and I just want to mention that I know everyone wants a wife, a Proverbs thirty one wife, but I. Wish we would have a Proverbs 31 for a an ideal husband because he's been amazing over the years and supported me in every way possible. Thanks. Um, it's only mostly true. The beginning of 2017, my doctor suggested an aggressive medicated treatment that would last about two years. We prayed and asked God if this was something that we should do as the treatment would cost a little bit over $1,000 a month and um, it would come with some concerning side effects. Which back then, I mean, we were early in our, both of our careers, uh, $1,000 a month. We weren't doing that unless God was showing up. So uh, that was part of our prayer. If we were going to do it, God needs to show up. Well, about a week later, mm -hmm. my doctor called us um, to let me know that she was able to get the treatment approved for free due to the severity of my case. So um, we went with it that night. God spoke to me for the first time and he gave me a dream and it was dream one of seven. I knew God was with us during this treatment um, because we had so much peace. We saw great progress in the beginning of the treatment, um, but after a year and two months, I had to stop actually due to feeling worse on the medication than before. So we decided to take a break as my body needed to recover. I think around 2018, 2019 um, was when I accepted the fact that I might never have a child of my own. And we did look into the process of um, adoption. Yeah. There were moments I actually did not even desire having a child anymore. I was so emotionally consumed. I was tired of hoping and believing. Um, I think the hardest part of this journey was the waiting and learning to trust God. Um, you know, the story of Peter walking on water, that's kind of what this journey felt like for me, except not the walking part, but the drowning. <laughs> because yeah. um, that's how gracefully I walked this drowning. journey. <laughs> Lots of drowning. Um, but in God's mercy, he showed up during our lowest moments through encouraging dreams and words from people around us. We have walked this journey alone for quite a few years and decided to keep things very private. 
I believe Pastor Louis was the first one to have a word of encouragement um, for us. And okay, even even if that that is true, but you can't give Louis that kind of credit. It's not good for his ego. Let's move past that point. <laughs> <laughs> he did have a word of encouragement for us, and he knew in his heart that something something was um, happening. We decided to share our struggle with our pastors, um, Kurt and Rhonda, as things were getting harder emotionally speaking. Fast forward to October 2019, Jake Mizak had a word over us. And if you've been coming to our church since then, I'm sure you remember that moment. That was that, that word was crucial for our that journey. That was a breaking point for sure. Yeah. Right. It was then when um, we picked a very select group of people to share the load of this journey, um, having a support group or a village to surround you and pick you up in times of struggle, it is so important. And it might seem tempting to share your struggle with everyone, um, thinking the more people know, the more people can pray in order for your miracle miracle to happen sooner. It doesn't work like that, unfortunately. In my opinion, um, too many people involved means too much noise and too many opinions. Um, Did we think after Jake's word, um, we will get pregnant immediately? We sure did. Yeah. Um, did it happen? It did not. Um, That's part of keeping your tribe small uh, but mighty. Um, we did tell a lot of people at first, and it got hard sharing bad news after bad news. Right. Like we were waiting for our testimony to to be complete. So um, we were sharing a ton of people, and then bad news came, and we had to share that with so many people. Yeah. And it was hard to move on when you're just constantly sharing with everyone what happened so um so keep your village small keep your small but mighty right um, we kept it with our small group yeah um and it was good and then the pastors of course um i remember crying my heart out to god and asking him why would he give me any glimpse of hope like he knows me and he knows how disappointed i get when yet again nothing is happening um next year february of 2020 something i have never experienced before happened and i just want to give a fair warning prior to sharing this experience um, because I also thought it was crazy and that I finally lost it. Uh, I was getting ready to leave the house, getting my makeup done. My husband works from home and he was just a long hallway um, from me within eyesight. Um, I wasn't even thinking about any words, about any of my dreams. I was just doing my makeup and I think I was actually watching Sans <laughs> the dress while getting ready. Um, out of nowhere, behind me, and close to my left ear, I heard a loud and clear by a crib. I turned around to see if Ellen had said something to me and I called him and asked him if um, he was talking to me, but he had headphones in and he wasn't even paying attention to me. I continued doing my makeup and I heard the voice again by a crib. I turned around again. I walked up to Ellen and asked him, you know, are you talking to me? Were you saying something? Are you, were you on the phone? Were you singing? And of course he said, no, I walked back to my makeup table and continued on. The voice came back almost louder and said for the third time by a crib. And I couldn't contain my tears. I sobbed like a child. And I finally told God, okay. Months went by, and I actually did not share this experience with um, with him. She told me. I didn't. I kept, kept it. This from me. I kept it for a very, very long time. She got an audible um, and kept it from me. Well, the reason I kept it for him, um, I, you know, myself thought it was insane and it would make me look like I need a quick check check in at a special clinic. Hey, I know that we're not pregnant and we're struggling in this department. I know things have been very sensitive, but um, just so you know, I'm hearing voices and also we need to buy a crib. So of course I didn't. Um, Nothing happened that year. And um, I continued praying and continued asking God for a miracle. The miracle didn't come. Finally shared my experience with Ellen, the audible. And we decided to pray for guidance on what to do next. We talked about IVF, adoption, surrogacy, um, you name it, and we just couldn't get on the same page, so we dropped the subject. The following year, we agreed to seek the help of uh, alter- alternative medicine and try something more natural since we have gone the Western medicine route and we didn't have much success. Um, after we lost another baby, I was overcome with guilt and told myself it's the result of disobedience. God did tell me to buy a crib. I did not do it. Um, 
So this is a result of that. Months later, in spite of us hurting emotionally, um, and with a little encouragement from a very close friend, we agreed we needed to buy the crib. A little encouragement. We got a text from her. We won't say her name, so we don't embarrass her. The text said, <laughs> word for word, buy the freaking crib. <laughs> so we bought, we bought the crib. We bought the freaking crib. <laughs> um, it was around Thanksgiving, um, but I couldn't bring myself to even open the box. So the, the crib stayed in the box for a very, very long time. I remember thinking maybe God needed me to act out in faith, do something so crazy and out of character for me in order to see the promises fulfilled. Um, a month later, we found out we uh, were pregnant and I was beyond excited. My beatings paid off and now we will have a child. We have <laughs> lost the baby shortly after finding out we were pregnant. Um, before each yeah. loss, God would give me a dream. I mentioned I had uh, a total of seven dreams and all those seven dreams were exactly the same. It's me, I'm giving birth, and I'm holding my daughter in my arms. Um, we knew from the very beginning we were going to have a girl. I mean, even when we were picking out names, um, we never could land on a boy's name. No matter how hard we tried, only girls' names. And yeah. um, all of our dreams, we had girls. Uh, and... Um, we have a girl. <laughs> Before each Spoiler loss, alert. <laughs> yeah. Um, next year, sorry, lost a little bit. Uh, next year, um, 2022, sorry. I underwent two surgeries in hopes that we um, that it will give us some uh, a better outcome, and it actually did not, and we have lost another baby. August of 2022, um, after intense praying and fasting, we have decided to seek help at a fertility clinic. While I know IVF or any fertility treatments are controversial among Christians, God gave us so much peace in our decision and we have seen favor after favor during it. We did a total of seven cycles, um, four incomplete cycles and three complete cycles with each fail cycle and after being tested for everything literally anything and everything under the sun we knew we had a very small chance to um, get pregnant naturally and our window of, of opportunity was actually incredibly small after using our very last embryo we decided to take a break our doctor uh, mentioned the possibility of an egg donor or um, if we wanted to adopt a frozen embryo we declined both options and decided to go a different route um, Kurt, Rhonda, and Louis all prayed individually and unanimously actually told us that we need to stop, take a break. We were actually planning to do the, the same thing, so we were all on the same, um, the same thought. This was, this was big because uh, this was years of IVF, insane amount of money. Again, this was another uh, place where we didn't know how we were going to afford it. IVF is incredibly expensive. Uh, we need the Lord to provide in this season and um uh as pastor kirk calls us a freebie i'm gonna give you a freebie right now uh we during this entire period financially uh we never stopped tithing and i highly recommend anyone who's going through any type of financial hardship tithe is not the thing to remove to try and get your finances back in order mm -hmm. um lord showed up we never went into debt uh we were able to pay everything um, it was incredible. So dropping all of this and then also all the physical things that Paula went through. I mean, I was giving her two to three injections a day um, during these IVF cycles. Some of them would make her faint because of the intensity of them. It was, it was insane. So saying, say, saying that we're done was huge. Um, right. Yeah, sorry, honey. It's okay. Um, really wanted to drive that home. Well, I knew I was done with IVF, um, but I did need to have two more surgeries. So our doctor scheduled me for both procedures. Um, five days before the procedures, um, I called to let them know that I was feeling a little bit sick. Um, so just for the sake of it, the girls were like, you know what? Test. So I was like, okay, whatever. I'm going to test. Um, of course, it was negative. The next morning, I was still feeling sick, and I decided to just you know, test again. It was negative. That night, I came home from work. I was still feeling um, very sick, and I decided to um, test again. Now, if you have gone through it, you understand my compulsion to test continuously. And because I have tested numerous times over the years, and those who have gone through it, I will yet again understand. Will yet again uh, understand. You sometimes see two lines. Um, 
and you convince yourself there is one, it's just very faint. So you continue testing until the answer is obvious. Um, so to my surprise, I actually did see two lines. I have learned not to get excited um, over the sight of two lines over the year, as years have passed. Um, I don't know if we spent more money over the years on all these treatments and meds or on uh, pregnancy tests. Honestly. Lots of testing. <laughs> um, I was also extremely cautious as I just finished the cycle of IVF and some of the injections can give you a false positive. So what, do I, what did I do? Well, naturally went out and bought more tests, actually about seven tests and tested every single one of them that night and every single one of them was positive. So the next morning I called the clinic, um, let them know what's going on. I went in for blood work to confirm that I am actually pregnant. I was told that I will get, I'll get a phone call later that day. It's going to take about three to four hours for the test to um, come through. Let me tell you, those three to four hours felt like years. Um, I finally get the phone call, picked up the phone, and I heard screaming of joy on the other end, um, and I just couldn't believe it. Everyone at the clinic was shocked. Um, we continued going in for blood work and ultrasounds, and just to hear our fertility clinic, uh, our fertility team, um, calling this pregnancy a miracle pregnancy and calling Olivia a miracle child felt pretty, pretty special. Now, if you were to tell me seven years ago, you'll get a child. But in order to get this child, this is the journey you have to walk. I would have said, no, thank you. Probably because yeah. it wouldn't have fit my timing, but God's timing surpasses physical understanding. Yeah. Our testimony, testimony is evidence of it. You know, as humans, we look at our sufferings and we think it's somehow noble that we suffer because we say, well, all God will turn it around. But don't be fooled to measure the greatness of your miracle by the heaviness of your suffering. Thinking, kind of well, the greater the suffering, the bigger my miracle will be. That's good, um, You know, we won't always get the answer to um, why did this happen to me, but I had to tell myself over and over again, um, you know, the verse in Psalm 37, trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and feed on his faithfulness. Delight yourself also in the Lord and he shall give you the desires of your heart. Commit your way to the Lord. Trust also in Him, and He shall bring it to pass. Um, in our lowest moments, all we had was each other and God. We had some very, very dark moments. Yeah. And we've argued with God a lot. Yeah. I held Him accountable <laughs> for every dream, every word that was spoken over us. Every stepping stone that we hit, every new treatment we started, we went to. We 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 got to see doctors that didn't even have an open schedule, wasn't taking new patients, and we were able to get in. So we're like, oh my gosh, that's a sign from God that we need to go here. And then when nothing came from it, we're like, okay, well, we trusted God to go in to this treatment, and now we have to trust God to leave the treatment? Right. Yeah, it was not easy, and we were not perfect. Um, as perfect as we look on the outside with all this, it was very hard. Well, because some parts of our journey did not make sense in the natural but right. god has given us supernatural peace and there's a reason it's called uh supernatural because it's it's a peace that surpasses all understanding yeah. um we couldn't have done it without our support group the prayers words of encouragement yeah. financial support they cried with us they rejoiced with us they were a crutch for us i mean every hardship we went through every miscarriage we went through people would show up to our door um, unannounced and not even ringing the doorbell to let us know that they're there, just yeah. dropping off packages yeah. and then texting us, we yeah. left you something. Yeah. Um, having that tribe and that support and that crutch to, you know, lift your arms up when you can't hold your arms up anymore um, was huge. And uh, we probably should have brought them in sooner, but we're glad we, we did. Yeah. Having a tribe is important. I never... Uh, imagine I would be sharing our testimony on <laughs> Mother's Day out of all days, but I'm humbled. We have been given this opportunity and we can say now, thank God it wasn't our way, but God's way. And thank God it wasn't yeah. in our timing, but God's timing for it. He gets all the glory. Gets all the glory. Happy Mother's Day. Good job, Sayla. Oh, Olivia, you did so good. I knocked the mic a few times. You did. So you're going to hear doo doo. Did you stop it or is it still going? It's still going. Oh, nice. Olivia, if you ever act up where you wanted something expensive, 
I'm going to show you this video.